Hey everyone, this is Braxton. I'm here with Coastal Nissan. I'm going to show you a little bit about the Aria today. All right, y'all. So let's get started on the road. One thing I really like about the Aria, you have your memory seat, so you can go and get your seat adjusted exactly how you want with entry and exit assist. So you notice how the seat slid forward as soon as I climbed in. The car is actually cranked up right now. I don't know if you can tell. And with this, you also have the adjustable center console, which would be nice about this depending on how you need it. I can adjust this thing collar. all the way up. And what you're seeing right here, my phone's popping through the screen. It's actually right here, your wireless Apple CarPlay. So you no, no longer need the use of the cord to be able to put your phone or your maps through the screen. So let's get on the road. All the power starts right from zero. So as soon as you take off, you have all the power needed to go and get up speed on the road. So first thing we do, let's get on the road real quick, see how it drives. As you can notice, my screen from my phone is populated with a map on the screen. You also have the vehicle's built-in navigation as well. In case you don't have an Apple phone or say something happens to your phone and uh, you need to be able to get somewhere. You have a built-in map as well. As you see, the Apple CarPlay or your messages pop on the screen. So let's get in the traffic real quick. So kind of slinging you around really quickly matter of seconds I'm already up to the speed limit and you have a speed limit sign indicator here and on your windshield would be available you know heads up display that's on this vehicle all I gotta do now is set my cruise control and I'll be able to adjust for any of the cars that are in front of me this time so I can be distracted talking to you and this car is gonna help me maintain my speed not only going forward but also slowing down to make sure I'm not gonna run into anyone in front of me so what you'll notice here this activate you see green lines on either side and the image of a vehicle the sensor up front is detecting that car that's in front of me and I'm doing the closer following distance so what this thing's now doing is gonna keep me centered in my lane and keep me from going on the car in front of me the fastest speed I'll go is my cruise control speed and I'll go as slow as the car in front of me in that zone if you don't like to follow real close you can also adjust your speeds your distances so let's have a further following distance I don't like to be really up close to someone as you know in Pauly's Island a lot of people all of a sudden hit the brakes need to make a right or a hard left turn so give yourself a little bit more room and buffer between you and the car in front of you so right now you're noticing going down the road the loudest thing about this car ride is me talking so really quiet ride really smooth and with the ProPilot assist that's activated now it's able to help me steer through a curve all I need to do is keep some pressure with my hands on the steering wheel and once your hands on the steering wheel we actually see the image right there about it and what it's going to do even through this curve right here, all I gotta do is just rest my hands on it, and the car's gonna take over from there and do the rest. Works really well on well-marked roads, so if it's like a poorly marked road or really bad weather, it's probably not gonna activate, but you know it's working based on the green lines right here. So as you're seeing, we're going smoothly through the curve, not a lot of like bobbing and weaving between the lines. It's a very smooth system operating through here. So if you don't put your hands on the wheel, it actually has a warning set up to tell you to put your hands back on the wheel. After a period of time, it'll actually deactivate the, the, the system so that it don't work. So all you do is put your hands on the wheel, put a little pressure, you're good to go. It wants to make sure you're awake, that you're driving safe. Just pass the new speed limit and offers the option to me to go and set my new cruise control speed to the current posted speed limit. With just one touch of a button instead of having to accelerate or have to constantly hit this button up or down. So a one touch system operation for the cruise controls would be great. A couple other things we'll notice here really easy access on the home screen. Everything you need from your maps, your phone, you can actually look up, let's say I'm driving, I'm say like right now we're heading south towards Charleston, but we want to know where the nearest charging station is. You can hit this button. If you look right here, it's gonna list all the closest charge points to me in my radius. And I can go as far as I want. So I keep scrolling, just a touch of a button. Say if I want to go to Conway, turn around, head back north, I know somewhere on my route, if I'm going that way, I'll have a charging station and have directions to that exact station. Make a U-turn after three quarters of a mile. So right now, the car is already telling me where to go and it's populating the instructions on my heads-up display. Really easy to find, no matter where you're going. It makes your routes easier to, easier to plan because the biggest concern people have, driving an electric car, where am I gonna charge it? This thing's already preloaded all the spots on your map, so that way you're not gonna get stuck on the road. As you see, we're still driving, smooth on those turns. So let's keep going. All your activated climate controls are here. Great thing about this, this is your standard, your entry level model. So it's already coming equipped with heated seats, heated steering wheel, and all, all of these features you've already seen right here below. So 
when we get up and go a little bit further down the road. Great thing about this, I need to get over to the left lane. With the blind spot sensor, I was able to tell if there's a car in my blind spot or not, be able to make a quicker decision between the changing lanes. Great thing about this particular model, so this is Nissan's lowest range for mileage on the model, but it still maintains upwards of 216 miles. I'm at 75% charge and I still have 185 miles left on this. Average driver doesn't drive more than 40 miles a day. And what you're able to do, let's say you're not able, you're just driving around town, you don't really want to stop at a charging station. You have a 110 adapter, you can plug it in in your garage to keep it charging. You also have a 240 adapter, so if you ever get a 240 outlet wired in your garage or somewhere in your home, we actually have a partnership Nissan does with, it's called Wallbox, really great company. They'll come out and install a box right in your home so you can actually have a regular charge port. You don't have to keep hauling around the cable. So you do a 110 at home, it's gonna take the longest to charge it, but if you don't drive that much, it'll keep you going. 240 is gonna pretty much charge this car from empty to full overnight. Um, takes on this one, takes about 10 hours to charge your car from completely empty to full with a 240 outlet. So say you get home at eight, you don't leave your house till six in the morning that's all the time you need to get this thing fully charged if you're driving less than 40 miles a day you're probably not even need that long and you can time your charges to take place at, at night when you're not paying those extra electrical rates different ways to save money so here we go really smooth operation getting up to speed another great thing about these things so you notice the power and a recirculation screen on your top left here so another way to conserve energy on these things, they have regenerative braking. So every time I've braked so far, it's actually been able to salvage the energy from the brakes, put it back towards the battery to make sure you can extend the range. They actually have another option right here. It's called the E-Step. So most people are familiar with driving with, you know, your acceleration pedal, you get your brake pedal. Imagine if you only had to do it with one pedal. All I do is hit this button, and now I can accelerate, maintain speed, or brake just one button with just one pedal and so that allows it to process the regeneration on your brakes a lot easier so right now every time I accelerate I use more power to let off it starts regenerating right away so I can maintain my range. so far I've driven about four miles only lost one percent of my charge and with the regenerative braking stop and go traffic areas you're going to get, actually get better um, electrical range so if you notice on the sticker city driving stop and go those brakes are going to extend your range the only time your range decreases on highway with less braking so getting around town most what most people do for driving not can be a problem you're going to keep your battery life a lot longer um, great thing about this car nissan is housed the battery at the bottom of the car it's balanced the weight so all these curves right here i've been driving through you're not worried about a battery in the front or on the back it's all along the base of the car what this allows you to do, maintain level cornering, stable driving, and what they've done, they've taken the technology to the next level. So you're gonna start noticing, like, you know, a lot of people say, hey, what about in the winter? How's the battery gonna do? So they actually have this, it's like a thermal aluminum, um, you know, metal that they surround, that they house the battery in. It's gonna help maintain the temperature of the battery. They wanna keep it closer to around, somewhere around like 75 degrees. It's kind of like that sweet spot. It's gonna help you give longer battery life. Also, just to make sure you're protected, Nissan offers an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty on the battery. If you lose a certain amount of cell life, the battery can't maintain a certain percentage of charge. In those eight years or 100,000 miles, they'll replace the whole battery. So there's no transmission or engine on this thing. It's all that battery. So if that thing goes out or you lose a certain percentage of it, taken care of. Nissan wants to make sure that you have a good experience with an electric vehicle and they are paving the way to make sure that charging is easier, that your range is better, you'll be a lot more efficient on the road. I know a lot of people are concerned, hey, how long does it take to charge it? When I'm on a road, what's the availability of those on a long trip? Honestly, you know, with, even with 216 miles, that's all, at 70 miles an hour, that's three hours of driving. I mean, everyone can always stretch their legs once every three hours. But we also have another model available at the showroom and get you upwards of 289 miles. That's over four hours of driving. So, and with that, 80% of the charge on that's in 45 minutes. So, you go get on the road, have enough time to stretch your legs, grab a quick bite to eat, keep going. So, 
really great things they've done at Nissan. As you see right now, slowing down the speed, not even hitting the brake. That's just the e-pedal. So really great options there. You actually see the brake lights on the screen, which is really cool. But you don't really see that in other cars. So seeing all lights show up right here as soon as I brake. See that right there? You may not do that. The car behind me might not, might not like it too much. Here we go, back up to speed here. In the comments, be sure to ask any questions you have about it, anything you need to know, any concerns about the uh, about this car. I mean, there's a lot of great things they've incorporated with it. Um, even from just the design, you see a really minimalist design throughout the car. Um, you know, traditional Japanese woodworking pattern spread out. I mean, they've really kind of brought it back to the roots, kept it you know, super wide open for anyone in the car. And all your buttons are through a haptic feedback on the flat surface. So every time I hit this, you actually feel a little response back. As soon as I turn the car off, you would be able to tell there's anything there. So it's a really cool setup. Um, really comfortable ride too. Uh, for anyone that's familiar with Nissan, this is kind of an in-between size to the Rogue and the Murano. A little bit more of the comfort of the Murano, but uh, just uh, a little bit more width than the Rogue. So not quite as big as the Murano, a little bigger than the Rogue. Super comfortable vehicle. So like I said, let us know any questions you have about it. I'm happy to answer or to give us a call. Um, have all the information you need about it so uh, come check us out we have three models available on the floor right now as we speak i'm happy to show them to you